So in today's video, we will talk about a general overview of software defined man, which is a marketing term of the new architecture for a remote site uh, branch network uh, routing architecture. The traditional remote site routing architecture is depicted here in, in this uh, figure or diagram where you have these uh, branch routers, uh, thousands of them for large retails and uh, large banks, you know, up to 10,000 branches that would have these routers and for one or two routers and then for redundancy purposes, they would have multiple uh, connections connecting them so the transport is going to be uh, either MPLS or a private circuit, and that's a traditional uh, ways of connecting your branch to your data center where your applications are. And the transport, the MPLS transport, let's say you have uh, from one given service provider, it is quite expensive uh, because it's it's a private circuit. It's a private network. Uh, you do not necessarily have to encrypt anything, but you could. But you also have to do some QoS, and they can also provide or honor your QoS marking for voice or any application that requires, you know, sensitive sensitive uh, time sensitive uh, information. So. Your primary transport has been traditionally for a branch network, MPLS, uh, with certain, you know, if, if the enterprise is really rich, they'll have multiple MPLS clouds. But uh, typically they would have one MPLS as their primary transport to connect to the data center. And then the users uh, that are here would connect to the internet through the data center going out. And therefore you'll have pair of firewalls here and a pair of firewalls here to secure and control your internet traffic. Uh, on the other hand, if you have thousands of uh, branches and you want to give each individual of them, or at least the large ones, their own internet, then you're going to have to have uh, a pair of firewalls managing that. So you have, you know, the more uh, disperse your architecture is the more complex it becomes for from a management and operations standpoint uh, but in this you know typically would uh, the internet go out from a data center and uh, you have one central point or at least two central points of uh, firewalls where you are you're managing the uh, security of your internet traffic so thousands of branches uh, and each has two connections, two transport connecting to the data center. Now, the obvious issue with uh, thousands of branch router uh, router network is that they all have BGP connecting to their primary transport, and BGP is a, a uh, best path or shortest path routing uh, metric protocol that would only route based on the information that its next stop is giving it. Uh, what is happening in the cloud, which, you know, service provider MPLS cloud has hundreds of routers and there could be traffic black holing there. So if the traffic is taking this path, uh, just because BGP is saying this is best path because I, I don't have any visibility, BGP doesn't have any visibility of traffic black holing. It's just saying I've got the best route here. Uh, BGP is up, it's passing the routes, <clears throat> and so the path goes like this, and the traffic gets black hole. You open a ticket with the service provider, they start troubleshooting, and they say, and they start informing all these uh, customers that are effective with this traffic black hole. And it could be anything happening in their network. Then, uh, if your BGP is configured for automatic uh, failover or convergence, it would take this path. Uh, and it would either bring up a circuit or it would start sending the packet or flows to this circuit until the primary path comes back up and the BGP would constantly fluctuate. It has its own convergence time. <clears throat> uh, you're going to have to convert, you know, have BGP for the 
backup path since it's just a wire. We're gonna have run BGP from this router to this router uh, on, on any private lead circuit, which are expensive as well. But if it's an MPLS, then between your CE customer edge router and a PE, which is a provider edge router, you're gonna run BGP between these two. In either case, BGP is making your, your, your decisions and it's, um, convert, it will converge based on the information it gets. And it would not give you any information based on what traffic black holing is happening here. Um, therefore, uh, this is this is you know this has been the traditional uh, routed branch remote site uh, routing architecture for almost three decades or more. And what SD WAN, which is software defined WAN, um, basically tells you is it's a marketing term. <clears throat> and it's uh, basically saying that uh, it's a, you know this traditional router with running you know a traditional routing architecture with BGP making the decision pan decisions. Now what you do is you put the SD WAN routers on your data center and your branch routers <clears throat> on the, on the branch site as your CE, and you have this one controller that's got the visibility. And it's got the visibility of end-to-end -end path. So this application will have a full visibility, or the SD-WAN uh, controller will have full visibility of both the paths, path one and path two, and they're all encrypted tunnels. So it'll monitor the path end-to-end -end, uh, with VS SLA or some other mechanism, which is service level agreement, whatever. Uh, you configure your, your path parameters to be from a packet loss, jitter, latency standpoint. It will, will select the path based on based on those parameters. But uh, it's the SD-WAN would have a full path uh, visibility of both the paths. And then based on that full visibility, it'll make a decision for a given application. So if application one has uh, a you know parameters or, or SLA configured that can use this path, it'll go this way. If the second application voice or IP has a parameter or profile that can use the internet as your second transport, it will go this way. Both are encrypted uh, and the QoS could be catered here. You don't have to do it because the, the SLA will you know automatically switch between between the paths. But uh, the coolest part of the SD-WAN architecture is that number one, uh, you don't have to really depend on MPLS as a transport. You can choose anything, even internet as your primary transport and internet as your secondary transport. Because again, MPLS takes a long time to provision, 90 days or even more. It's very expensive uh, and it's traffic black holing that happens inside the service provider network is uh, is it takes a long time to troubleshoot and it's very frequent uh, and typically in a large service water network and then BGP will take its sweet time to converge to a, a secondary uh, transport uh, that is if it's configured properly and again even in that case if there's traffic black holing on the internet side uh, BGP would have no clue what's happening inside the cloud it only gives you uh, the information that it's getting from its immediate neighbor, uh, in this case, these routers at the edge. So BGP is 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 a uh, you know uh, a service provider protocol that is is per hop based metric. It gives you uh, the information based on its neighbor relationship, immediate neighbor relationship, versus the new architecture, which is a software defined man. It would give you the information or intelligent intelligence based on the complete path from from this router all the way to this router and this router all the way to this router and it'll select the path automatically for whatever application you want uh, based on that intelligence and all that intelligence is controlled and stored in in one given controller that controls all these routers so now you have this controller that is giving you the intelligence of end-to-end -end path, which BGP didn't give you, 
It is giving you configuration auto, uh, you know, facility from one place. Uh, previously, it was individual routers that you got to go and configure. Thousands of routers, 10,000s maybe, right? Uh, and so you have to configure each one of them, troubleshoot each one of them, monitor each one of them. Now you got one controller, a pair of one controller that would configure, would monitor, would provision automatic ZTP, which is zero touch provisioning. Uh, provisioning, controlling, monitoring, and you know, uh, you know, doing doing configuration. Uh, what you call uh, uh, management of, of your software pushes. So your your upgrades, your software upgrades. So previously, if you want to automate individual software upgrades and, and config pushes, you can do that with with a separate automation uh, engine. Uh, and that you're going to have to, you know, that's a, it's a, it's a, it's a nightmare by itself uh, to go and make sure that you are doing it correctly. It's a, it's a separate team that would need to be inclusive in, in besides the network engineering that needs to do the automation. Here, the entire automation is done by one controller or a pair of controllers that sits in your data center or even in the cloud. And in this architecture, the other thing is that if you're, you're, you're 10,000 branches, if each single one of them needs internet connection, they would need uh, either go have their own internet connection or they'll have to come to the data center for the internet. So you have these firewalls uh, that you would put in front of this uh, internet connection and manage these for your security. Uh, in this architecture, your your internet is, is your transport. And so now you can, uh, if you want to go to the data center, you just go over the tunnel. And if you just want to go to the internet, you just take the, the native wire, the actual wire, uh, not the tunnel, and then and go to the internet. So you have that flexibility of not having uh, separate internet exits uh, and just have internet as your transport connecting your branch and your data center. And then you have an automatic internet connection for the users here going to the internet and all the branches that want to access the internet. So that's one big you know, uh, flexibility in this architecture. Besides the, the biggest aspect, which is end-to-end -end path, end-to-end -end path visibility. And, and these, these are configured and, and, and provisioned and monitored and everything is through one central plane. And it's one central plane that you need to log in and it will give you the complete visibility of, you know, uh, what's happening in, in your SD-WAN or branch network and what's what's happening with the path. If, if there is a convergence, if there's an instance where the application was supposed to go this way and now it's going this way, you can automate the uh, alerts and then you can also see what's, uh, you know, how long it took this and, and what's happening, how long it's taking to converge. You can configure this and push it out to to the branches automatically <clears throat> and the ztp feature zero touch provisioning if you have new branches that are coming in you can install the router through internet connection again the internet connections are very cheap and very quick to provision compared to an mpls connection or even a private cir lease circuit it's it takes long time very expensive the only good thing about them is they're they're private but there's a cost to that private uh, the pri private part but here it's a public network, but now you're, you're putting all your traffic uh, on, on top of the encrypted secure tunnel, which is a VPN, uh, right? It's a VPN tunnel. So it's, it's secured uh, and it's flexible, it's quicker, it's uh, more centrally controlled. And the biggest difference between this is really the intelligence of path selection. So that's the real key uh, of of uh, most of the vendors is is really they all provide uh, intelligence uh, intelligent based path selection between the branches and the data center and the internet uh, and you know some of them have a lot more automation and, and profiles and, and application profiles and signatures so you know each vendor has a different solution that gives you uh, you know a different uh, feature set the firewalls are built into the, these routers. So any, any, any traffic that's hitting the internet is, is going to go through this router and the firewall features are built into these routers. So you don't have to put another uh, pair of firewalls uh, just to secure your traffic. 
uh, or scrutinize your traffic, which traditionally that's what you used to do, uh, is put the pair of firewalls to make sure that what's coming in and what's going out is, 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 is legit. So this architecture, the software defined then is, is really a, a transition from a traditional routing architecture of uh, moving from a private transport to a more public transport and uh, securing them over tunnels and making intelligent automatic path decisions based on your application profiles. And it's, it's a very uh, sophisticated piece of uh, uh, software uh, and it's it's a really great transition uh, in the industry for the last five years a lot of players are are out there competing uh, some are very cheap but uh, but they do not scale and, you know typically when you're talking about large enterprises with tens and thousands of branches your your, your real issue is scale how do you scale uh, and, and some of the solutions <clears throat> would only scale to some few thousands, but not tens, tens of thousands of uh, branches. And then, you know, uh, IPsec being the prevalent encryption protocol, uh, how, you know, it adds headers and an overhead to the traffic. So if you have satellite links, low, low speed satellite links on your branch network, then there are SD-WAN solutions out there <clears throat> that would provide non-IPsec based solution. They would encrypt, they would not create a uh, tunnel, but they would just encrypt the payload that would go to your data center and they would not encrypt that when it's hitting the internet. So a lot of variation and variety out there. You just have to dig and, and make sure that you analyze these SD-WAN solutions out there when you are trying to uh, vet out a solution for, for, for the company. But that's, uh, that's really the high level perspective of what, ha what really SD-WAN is. And it's really uh, the overall umbrella is SDN, which is software defined network. And SD-WAN is really, uh, is, is the big part. Uh, the other SD, SDN is really the software defined data center which is uh, more of a VMware term, term that basically does the same thing. It basically creates your automation using a controller for all the networking inside the data center. So uh, that that's the scope of this video. I, it, I hope uh, this helped explain what uh, an SD-WAN network is and uh, how it works.